My name's Regan. I work for Anthony J. Lyon, International Detective Bureau. They call me the Lion's Eye. Wednesday at 9, and CBS brings you Jeff Regan, Investigator, starring Frank Graham as Regan, with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. So stand by for mystery and suspense and adventure in tonight's story of The Lady from Brazil. Her name was Irene Centino. The lady from Brazil, the lion called her. He figured it for an easy trace job, something for missing persons, only when we do them, the lion gets paid. Yeah, the program said it was simple. Except before we wound it up, there were a couple of added attractions. A doctor who didn't do any doctoring, a nurse with a built-in temperature, and a couple of blackouts that were meant to be permanent. And guess what? In that last part, I was supposed to be the star. Anyhow, it all began late last Monday. I was home. My boss, Anthony J. Lyon, knocked on my door. And that's when I made my first mistake. I let him in. Regan, I'm glad I found you in. I'm just on my way home from the office. You could have kept on going. I'm out of Johnny Walker. Oh, now, Regan, I didn't come by just for that. You got anything else? No. Uh, all right, all right. As a matter of fact, I... Yeah, I want your advice, Regan. Cut out starches and get some exercise. What else? Yeah, what would you do if you traveled 10,000 miles just to see your sister and then couldn't find her? I'd give up the search. You would? Why? I haven't got a sister. Oh, that's not what I'm talking about. You'd go to missing persons, wouldn't you? Sure you would. But if you knew your family in a foreign country would become greatly alarmed at this sort of notoriety, you'd look for your sister in another way. You'd hire a good private detective. Now, isn't that right? Come on, Fatso. Put it on the road. What do you mean? I'm just posing a simple problem. And you've got an angle somewhere. All right. We have a new client. Her name's Irene Santino. She's from Brazil. Rio. Fine family, Regan. A coffee. She's engaged international to locate her younger sister, Carmen. I'm no St. Bernard. You'll do till I can feed one. Oh, now, I know you've been working hard lately, but, Regan, this is one of those occasions when I'm proud to be a part of our profession. We have an opportunity to help a young lady in desperate straits and at the same time secure goodwill from South America. Ever hear of the State Department? Of course I have, but they can't do it all alone. It's up to individual citizens to take responsibility, too. And that's the only reason you want me to find a sister? Absolutely. Now, Miss Santino is taking an apartment at this address. Here, go see her, comfort her, let her know International and the United States of America will do everything possible to locate her lost sister. Yeah. That all? That's enough. What'd she pay you? $200. That's a lot of green to get in advance. Well, she insisted. She's very anxious to find that girl. Watch out, her check doesn't bounce. <laughs> it won't. She paid cash. That $200 was already making a lump in the lion's coat, and I knew the next spot for it was his mattress. Well, maybe that's the reason he's a bachelor. I left him in my place and drove over to the address he'd given me. It was one of those Beverly Hills apartments with a long, glassy look. Like a greyhound with a sore stomach. Irene Santino's apartment was on the second floor. She was a tall, brown-haired girl without a smile. She wore glasses. And when she talked, she sounded sad. Like a banjo player with a paper pick. Thank you so much for coming over, Mr. Regan. I've been very upset all day. I just had to do something about Carmen. Your assistant? Yes. She's the one I... I came to California to see. I heard. It's an awful vacant feeling. I thought she'd meet me at the airport, and then she wasn't there. And when I went to her address, we were very close. She's from Rio, too? Yes. How's yes. her English? Uh, her, well, her... The same as mine. We were both educated in the United States. You older than Carmen? Yes, two years. She's 25 now. Uh, Carmen left home a year ago. She's always been very independent. And, uh, oh, I received this letter from her a few days ago. It was the first word since she left home. You came this way? Uh, yes. No envelope? Oh, I threw that away. She wrote her address there at the end, and I didn't see any need for keeping the envelope. And uh, she wasn't at this address? There isn't any such address. What does Carmen look like? Well, I gave her a snapshot to Mr. Lyon. 
Didn't he give it to you? Yeah, uh, he forgets things. Well, no matter. I have another. Of course, it's old and not very good. I think it's right here in the suitcase. You'll pardon things strewn all over. I haven't had time. Here. Oh, here. Here. There you are. Let's see. She's blonde? A little lighter than mine. The same height, too. We used to wear each other's clothes. Oh, Mr. Regan, you will be able to find her, won't you? I don't think you want me to. Mr. Regan, are you trying to be funny? You hand me a snapshot so old it could be anybody, and a letter that says nothing, and you want me to turn up a blonde. But I thought those would be leads. She mentions the name of her doctor. I... Is he the man? The man? She left home a year ago. She wasn't following the crops. There was a man in it. I've got to have it all, lady. All right, all right. There was a man. His name was Frank Martin. Come, I met him once in Mexico City. She thought she was in love with him. He lives out on Laurel Avenue. You talked to him? No, no. But I ask questions around. I'm completely satisfied he knows nothing about it. Perhaps if you'd see the doctor, my sister mentioned... You want me to find your sister? Yes. But you don't want me to see this Frank Martin. I didn't say that. You didn't have to, lady. Okay. You'll get a report when I've got something. Oh, um, just one more thing. What's that? How long did you stop off on the way to shop in New York? Well, I... I... What makes you think I'd do that? When you leave your clothes strewn around, the label show. There's no Saks Fifth Avenue in Rio. When I walked out, her mouth was wide open like she was trying to scream. Only nothing came out. I hung around outside the door for a minute to see if she'd use the phone, but nothing happened. I looked up Frank Martin in the city directory and drove over to Laurel. A two-story apartment building, the color of a bride's blush. It was wrapped around a swimming pool. Too small for people and too big for birds. Martin's name wasn't on the mailbox, so I looked up the manager. You don't know me, do you, Pilgrim? Well, I just got here. I played the pals in 26. Oh, them were the days. Write it up and sell it to the movies. <coughs> them slobs. Central casting ain't called me in four years. Got a card? Afros, S-A-G, and the Musicians' Union. I play French horn. <laughs> None of them call me. I figure it's television. No union yet. I'm looking for a man named Frank Martin. Now, look, if you got trouble, stay away from Frank. He bruises easy. And you're just a mother, too. He's a nice laddie. Now, remember what I tell you. Sure, huh? sure. All right. <sighs> Come on. I'll show you. Thanks. That's him. Up there. He stays in one key. All the time. A low one. You said that once. Well, here we are. You know, I kind of like you. You get around. Ever run into Mervyn Leroy? Not yet. If you do, mention my name, will you? Sure. What is it? Just say that Trixie Finnegan was asking for him. He'll remember old Trixie. How could he forget? <laughs> You're not a woman, you know. Come on in. It's unlocked. Your name Frank Martin? Yeah, who wants to know? My name's Regan. I'm a private investigator with the International Detective Bureau. Wrong steer, Gumshoe. I don't need one. I'm not looking for work. I'm looking for you. What'd you say it was? Regan? Yeah. R-E-G-A-N? Regan. Regan. <laughs> Just wrote that one. Pretty cute, eh? I'm looking for a friend of yours. Carmen Centino. Oh. How is Carmen these days? I don't know. But you said you were a detective. I did. You sound like an amateur to me. You sound like a guy with a chip on his shoulder. You sound like a lot of things. You're trying to get tough, baby. It figures out where your name isn't on the mailbox. Yeah? Nobody would ever write you. I'll just skip that, Regan. Well, who hired you to do what? Her sister's in town. She's looking for Carmen. You no, know Carmen had a sister. What else? You're the boyfriend. <laughs> boyfriend. It's real good. Let me tell you what she's like, Regan. Eyes just right. Hair just right. Everything just right. Wait till you see her in a bathing suit. That's something, brother. She isn't wearing one in this picture. Let's see. No, it's a bad picture, Regan. Hardly looks like her like she is. Ever met him like that? Well, we're going to be married, Regan. Only she decided all of a sudden she didn't want him. Just like that. It was her idea. I haven't seen her since. You try? Once. She moved. No forwarding address. That's all. Makes good story. Yeah, but you don't believe it. 
Let me tell you the reason we broke up. It's a dilly. My hearing's good. Well, you've heard about the happy couple. But the guy keeps getting loaded, can't lay off. Well, this is different. This is the big switch. Carmen. Yeah, yeah, Carmen. And why she was seeing a doctor? Carmen seeing a doctor? Look, why don't you get out of here? We don't like each other. My sister thinks something might have happened to Carmen. She's scared. Yes, yeah, some of us are scared part of the time. When somebody makes a lot of noise looking for somebody, then everybody gets scared. You scared, Regan? Yeah. What about? Carmen Centino. I might be looking too late. Well, what he gave me filled in the cast, but the plot wasn't getting any clearer. So I looked up the doctor Carmen had mentioned in her letter. His name was Kingston, and the only address was a place out in Encino. It was a ranch house spilled all over the top of the hill like whipped cream. <laughs> Figured he was getting over ceiling for his pills. I parked my car by the gate, followed the flagstones up to the front door. When I pressed a button, I heard something that sounded like chamber music. And then a blonde girl wearing a red dress that must have been riveted on opened the door about the middle of the second chorus. Mm. I like blue serge. Has an effect on me. It's the only thing in the closet. You fill it out nice. But you don't look sick. I want to see the doctor anyway. Mm, come on in. We'll talk about it. Ah, you are tall, Mr. Uh... Regan. Regan. Who are you, Florence Nightingale? I hold the doctor's stethoscope. My name's Vivian Lytell. Mind telling him I'm here? He's busy. He just opened another bottle. Well, I'm right on time. Oh, Rex isn't sociable like me. He drinks alone. He gets more that way. Let me entertain you. Easy, Angel. I don't know how to fix a fracture. I've already got a man who can do that. I want one with brains. What's the matter with a doctor? Keeps his in a bottle. Hasn't used them for a long time now. He's done all right. This? <laughs> He'd be selling papers if his wife hadn't left him a good insurance policy. Don't you like his money? Oh, don't get me wrong. It's just that the girl has feelings, too. Yeah, they show. I'm glad I met you. We're going to have some nice afternoons. I thought you worked for a living. Hmm. Got lots of free time. Besides, I should have at least one outside interest. Keep looking. You'll find one. You smile good, but you talk nasty. I only came to see Kingston. Well, there's always a phone. Call and make an appointment. Now, get out. Oh, Vivian, about... The... Oh, I didn't know you had company. I'll talk to you another time. Just a minute, Doctor. This is Mr. Regan. Huh? He's your company, but he doesn't have a business card. Oh. Well, <coughs> look, Mr. Regan. I'm no longer in practice. Just doing research on my own. I have all the medical equipment I can use. I turned all my patients over to another doctor. I know one you forgot. Well, tell me who. Carmen Centino. Carmen. Go ahead, Vivian. I'll, I'll speak to Mr. Regan. Watch yourself, Rex. He doesn't know how to be nice. Will it take a minute? I'll crack some ice. You'll need a drink. She's a very fine nurse. Yeah. It's a nice uniform. Uh, well, working on my own, very casual. You said I had a patient named Carmen... Uh, what was it? Carmen Centino. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Mr. Regan. Who told you that? Well, I read about you in a letter. That must have been another Kingston. There's only one with a license. You're a relative of the girl? Friend. You're a detective, aren't you? Yeah. Want to show me your files someday? <laughs> Why not today? This way, I keep them right here in my lab. Help yourself, Mr. Regan. Oh, you want a drink? Too early. You don't mind if I have one? Mm, you're out. Mm. Didn't find anything? Not under Santino. She could have used another name. Oh, that's possible. When was I supposed to have treated her? Well, about a year ago, according to this letter. Here, this is a picture. Uh huh. No. Oh. I've never treated anyone who looks like that. Sure. Positive. What was her illness? Might have had something to do with that stuff you're drinking. They die from it sometimes. I see. You can't see it from this window. But just over the hill, my wife is buried. I had special permission from the county, of course, bury her in my property. She was a great comfort to me. We were very close. I haven't been the same since she passed away. 
And that is why I am no longer in practice. I didn't ask for that. Oh, but you did, with your eyes. Hmm. You're a strange man. Do you enjoy making a living this way, prying into other people's lives, searching for, for what is best left alone? Do you still hear, Rex? Yes, yes, Vivi. He's just leaving. You didn't find your way? Yeah. Oh. Bye, Blue Surge. You were a real disappointment. Don't give up. I'll be back. Don't bother, Regan. The doctor will be out. <laughs> The whole thing looked phony, like a fan dancer in long underwear. But when I left the two of them, I was beginning to get an idea, just beginning. I walked over the side of the hill to look at that grave. It was there all right, like he said. Irene Kingston, 1922, 1948. Well, maybe that explained it. Maybe it didn't. I was remembering those New York labels I'd seen on my client's clothes. I called up a friend of mine in the CAA. He checked into it and told me nobody named Santino had come in from Rio on any flight in the last week. And the immigration people didn't have a passport or visa record on her either. I was home thinking about all this when my phone began ringing. It was Irene Santino, and she did all the talking. I tried to get you at your office, Mr. Regan, but no one answered. I had to speak to you. What about? I found Carmen. Say that again. I found Carmen. Or rather, Carmen found me. I feel foolish now. Calling her people in and all that. She came right to my apartment. Can you imagine she's been looking for me? Uh, uh, please thank Mr. Lyon for his kindness. And, um, Mr. Regan. Yeah? It's all confidential. I wouldn't want any of the, this to get to the wrong people. You know some of the wrong kind? Doesn't everyone. Well, goodbye. <sighs> Oh, uh, Regan. Regan, you run any expenses on this Santino thing? No. Good, good. It's all over. Well, how do you know? She just phoned me. Just came from missing persons. There's a cop there named Perini. Got an eye like an eagle. Had that other picture of the Santino dame with me. He took one look at it and opened up a file. What kind of file? Dead and unclaimed. What do you mean? The county buried her. Carmen Santino's been dead a year. <laughs> This is CBS, and you are listening to The Story of the Lady from Brazil, tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, Investigator. Well, it figured somebody was having nightmares. I didn't say anything to the lion and went down to the Hall of Records. There was a little guy sitting at the desk in Vital Statistics. His fingernails were dirty, and that wasn't a Harry Drucker haircut he was wearing. He was reading a dictionary, and he must have been at a good part, because he looked mad when I nudged him. No, 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 we're not in the bus, buddy, so just quit shoving. I want some information. Public servant, that's what I'm here for. What kind of information Death do you files. want? Death files. You're such a morbid guy. You got lots of stuff on births and marriages. Why don't you ask me something about them? A girl named Carmen Santino died about a year ago. Tell me what from. Okay, okay, take it easy. Santi- how, how do you spell it? Just like it sounds. Sa- uh, Santino, huh? Yeah, Santino. What's that say? Sabatini, Sailor, Sanaki, Sanford. Sanford, that's what happened to old Sandy. <laughs> no wonder I ain't seen him around lately. Get I the thought... Santino. Oh, yeah, Santino, yeah. <clears throat> yes. Uh, Santino, date of death, 15 October, 1948. Cause of death? Alcoholic poisoning. Alco... Yeah, that's right. How'd you get it? Never mind. Who signed the certificate? Uh, Rex J. Kingston, M.D. Okay. Now, here's one more for you. Look up Irene Kingston. Uh, the doc's wife? Look it up. Okay, okay, yes. Uh, let's see. King, Kingsley... Oh, here, yeah, here. Yeah. Kingston, Irene, 13 October, 1948. Cause of death? You guessed it again. The same. Alcoholic poisoning. Hey, this guy couldn't keep a patient. Well, that filled it in. I could see the plot, but I wasn't sure of the ending. So I didn't waste any time getting over to Irene Santino's place. But I wasn't fast enough. The door was halfway open when I got there. All the company had left, but Irene was still around. She was sitting there, looking at the phone, like 
Like it was all she had to think about. <laughs> Miss Reed. That's so funny. <laughs> Excuse me for not getting up, but I didn't expect you. I told you I found my sister tonight. You told me, but you didn't tell me she was dead. <laughs> I didn't even tell you that I haven't got a sister. Did I? Did I? Come on, lady, give it to me. What are you talking about? This, this little red spot on my arm. It doesn't look like much, does it? <laughs> but you just wait, Mr. Regan. <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> I found a doctor on the floor below. He grabbed his black bag and went to work on her. She quieted down to a slow, inside giggle. <laughs> then went out all the way. The doctor got a hold of an ambulance and carted her off to a hospital. They just wheeled her out the door when the lion showed up. Regan! Regan, did I see an ambulance out in front? That's right. Your client was in it. Huh? Somebody stuffed her full of something and made her giggle. I don't understand all this at all. I stopped by home to change to my dark suit so I could come by and bring Miss Centino the news of her sister's death. And what do I walk You can into? save your tears, fat, so she didn't come from Brazil and she wasn't rich. That woman gave me $200, cash. There was nothing unreliable about her. We had a contract. Well, New Year's coming up. You can use it for confession. Now, see here, Regan. Look at this picture. Irene Santino, I have one just like it. All right, draw some glasses on it. Add about six or seven years. I don't understand you, Regan. We're talking business, and all at once we're playing look, games. Look, look, when I came to see her tonight, she wasn't wearing her glasses. She looked a lot like the dame in this picture. Well, of course she did, naturally. That's her own sister. She never had a sister. Never had a sister? Then who did the county bury? That's what I'm going to find out from a certain Dr. Kingston. <laughs> A feeling you'd be back. I built a fire. I forgot the marshmallows. Mm, we'll think of something else. I'm, I'm not mad anymore. I'm still looking for your doctor. Well, let me take care of you. I have a way with men. Didn't we do all this once before? Well, it's night now. I'm better with the lights low. You can ask me some questions. I know some swell answers. I'll bet. How do you like it? Your way. That's better. Now let's have a nice, quiet evening. Just you and me. That why you wore that? You like it? You got talent, lady. You'll discover me. There's been a famine of men like you. You don't look underfed. <laughs> Come on, you haven't touched your drink. I want to see him. Oh, all right. We could have had such a nice evening. Rex. What is it? Mr. Regan's here again. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello, Regan. Didn't I tell you I'd be out? You told me that, but you didn't tell me what I wanted to know. I had to go to Vital Statistics to get it. Uh, what? You don't have anything in your files about Carmen Santina, but you signed her death certificate. Now you get this, Regan. I don't have to talk to anyone who comes here without a warrant, and you haven't got one. When I tell the city attorney's office what I've got, they'll have somebody out here to open that grave on the hill. What do you mean, Regan? Irene Kingston died two days before Carmen Centino. Of the same thing. Dr. Kingston signed both certificates, and he collects on his wife's insurance. Only I don't think his wife really died. I think that extra grave on the hill is window dressing. My wife didn't die, Regan. Where is she now? I don't know. But she could be around town using the name of Irene Centino. It was a shot in the dark, but it brought results. Kingston swung the lamp base around it, connected on the side of my head. When I came to, I was in a white room in the back of the house. Nothing worked. So I just laid there. Vivian was standing there with Kingston. He looked sick, like an ostrich with a sore throat. He had a needle in his hand. I got the shakes. You do it all right, Rex. Go ahead. It's the same treatment you two tried to give Irene. You should have stayed out, Regan. I wanted one more look at you, baby. I hate to see the nice ones go, but it'll be all over in a minute. All right, Rex. Give me a drink, Vivian. I gotta have a drink. It won't help. I found Irene in time. She's in a hospital. What? She's gonna live. She's gonna talk. Oh, ahead, Irene's Rex. still alive? Rex, give it to him, and then we'll clear out. I didn't kill her. I didn't kill her. You'll do better this time. I can't, I can't. Go ahead. No, no, I won't. I said go ahead. I'll shoot you, Rex. I'll shoot you if you don't. No, you won't. It's you all over, Vivian. It's Vivian all over! Gun, but Kingston was too it's much for it. All of a sudden, it began going off. Vivian Hi. started to look pale. And then she went down, slow. Oh, she... 
deserve that. Yeah, but you're going to tell the state? Regan, is Irene really going to live? And that's what the doctor says. Oh, good, good. Regan, look, no, don't try to move. I gave you a shot of preparatory solution. You won't be able to move for another hour. I suppose I ought to run. You won't get far. I know. Listen to me. Irene is my wife. She's innocent of all this. When you tell the police the real story, I no, want I haven't you... got it all. I know it started with Carmen Santino. Oh, she stumbled in one night, dropped dead before I could do anything for Alcohol. Her. Yeah. Before she died, she kept talking about a man named Martin. He lives over on Laurel. But I didn't get in touch with him. I had a better idea. She looked it a great deal like my wife, Irene. It was really quite remarkable. The insurance. Yeah. Irene didn't want to do it, but she loved me, so she finally agreed to hide out in New York. I used one body for two death certificates, buried an empty box up on the hill. I was supposed to join Irene later. We were going to start a new life together. Vivian. Yeah. Vivian came along. I was drinking one night. She found out the truth. I was trapped. Would have stayed that way if Irene hadn't hired you. Well, it figures she made up that story about a sister from Brazil just to scare you into getting rid of Vivian. It worked, too. I'm scared stiff. Yeah, like that guy Martin said. Somebody gets scared, and, and then you... And everybody. Regan? Regan, can you hear me? Huh? Oh, sorry. This stuff's making me sleep. Yeah, that'll wear off. I'm going now, Regan. See that Irene gets a fair shake. I'll try. He picked up a bottle and started out the door. He didn't even look down at Vivian's body on the floor. I tried to move, but like you said, nothing worked. It was more than two hours before I could get to the phone and call homicide. And it was more than two days before I talked to the lion. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, my boy, how are you feeling? Better? Well, the fog's gone out of my head, if that's what you mean. Otherwise, I feel lousy. Oh, don't take it so hard, my boy. All in a day's work. Besides, there's the brighter side. Yes, indeed. Like what? Well, for one thing, they got that Dr. Kingston. He only got as far as Las Vegas. Crime doesn't pay, Jeffrey. Crime just does not pay. Doesn't, huh? What's this? Yeah, now, now, wait a minute. Give me that. Application. Consolidated insurance. It's nothing, I tell you. You mean to tell me you're going to try to collect a reward? Well, we did expose an insurance fraud, and there's nothing in the world that stinks like a fraud. I'll say. Hey, wait a minute, Regan. Where are you going? Out to buy an airwick. <laughs> Jeff Regan, Investigator, is written by E. Jack Newman, directed by Sterling Tracy, and stars Frank Graham as Regan, with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. Original music is by Dick Arant. <laughs> Jeff Regan, Investigator, is heard each week at the same time over CBS. Bob Stevenson speaking and inviting you to be with us again next Wednesday at 9 for more suspense and mystery and adventure with Jeff Regan, Investigator. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.